Hello, and welcome to the Go Canvas Essentials course. This is the first video in the Customize Your Forms and Data Delivery session. We will be going over properly formatting a reference data file, then uploading via the two methods, CSV file and the Google Sheets integration. Reference data is a handy automation tool that uses data uploaded to your account to automatically populate fields. Reference data makes it simple to keep your forms up to date, consistent, and error free. Automating this on the back end will save you loads of time in both the field and the office. With reference data, users will simply choose the right option from a list rather than try to memorize it. Reference data can be implemented for many use cases like customer information, part names, and prices, so we recommend applying it to your forms early and as often as possible. We'll begin by building our reference data file properly, and it's the same format whether you use Excel or Google Sheets. Let's format our data set in Excel first. For this example, we will use customer information as it is an incredibly common use case and demonstrates this feature well. Our first field is customer name, which will be called the parent field in future steps. When building either the form or the file, the parent field should be a unique identifier that will be obvious to your users. After determining the parent field, the rest of the field labels are filled in across the first row. These labels determine not only the data that will fill down the column, but the order is also relevant for certain use cases. I recommend labeling the column headers either exactly as the fields are labeled in the form or with distinguishable information like billing address and shipping address if there are multiple address fields within the form. You will see in future steps that this attention to detail will make it easier when associating the columns in the file to the fields in the form. Once the labels are added, fill in the corresponding data down the column so that related information goes across one row. Each file can have up to 15 columns of data. If you need additional columns, another separate file will be needed. There are ways to connect these files together for seamless data population in the form, so visit our Help Center to learn more. Once the columns are formatted and the data is filled in, save the Excel worksheet as a CSV file. Now that the file is saved as a CSV, it can be uploaded to your GoCanvas account. Go to the Reference Data and Images tab in your portal. Near the top of the page, in the right corner, is the Add Reference Data button. The following page will give you the option to upload using CSV or Google Sheets. This time, we will leave it as a CSV file and to press Next. Give your file a name that will quickly describe the contents and a larger description if you wish. Click Choose File and find your CSV to upload and confirm your choice. The checkbox on the screen is related to using groups and should remain unchecked unless you have built the file to be divided by user groups. Please visit the Help Center for more information on using reference data with groups. Then hit Upload and it will be added to your account. Next, we'll try this in Google Sheets. Although building the file is the same, the upload process has a few differences. I have simply taken the exact dataset from the CSV file, copied it into Google Sheets, and given it a name that will be easy to recognize later. Returning to the Reference Data and Images tab, press Add Reference Data again, but this time choose Import from Google Sheets. If this is your first time using the integration, you will be guided through an authorization process. Select the spreadsheet from the list, then scroll to the bottom to press the Import button. On the next page, you can change the name or leave it the same, provide a description, and divide it among user groups, just like in the previous process. Then press Save. The following screen will show you your file in a table format and a button in the upper right corner called Resync, which will allow you to pull in any updates to the file instantaneously. You will need to hit Resync any time an update is made to the Google Sheet to pull the new data into your account. Now that the files are in your account, they can be used in any form you wish. If changes are made to the file and re-uploaded or synced to your account, those changes will apply everywhere that the file is used, saving you a lot of time keeping your data up to date. Reference data works with these field types in Builder Beta. The first column contains the most commonly used field types for reference data. Remember, you can update field types within the settings modal for a field if it is not compatible with reference data. Let's discuss the importance of the parent field, which is customer name in this example. This first field will determine what information will populate the following fields, so it's crucial to choose the easiest field type to cause this chain reaction. 
the most common parent field type is the drop-down menu. Users will be familiar with them, so it'll be obvious what they need to do when filling out the form. The next step is often called column mapping, but that just means to attach the field to the corresponding column in the file. Within the settings gear for the parent field, toggle to the Reference Data tab. The Reference Data File dropdown displays all the files in your account, so this is where we will select the file we uploaded earlier. The Reference Column dropdown includes all column labels. Choose the corresponding column for this field, which will be easy since the labels are clear. The last two dropdown menus will remain empty for the parent field. Before exiting the modal, toggle to the Choices tab. Scroll down until the default value setting is visible on the right side of the modal. Expand the drop-down menu and select Blank, which will leave the parent field drop-down empty when starting a new submission. Click Done to exit the modal. For the next field and remaining fields in the dataset, select the same reference data file as the parent field and choose the corresponding reference column. For the reference screen drop-down, select the screen where the parent field is located. The reference field in this example refers to the parent field. Simply repeat these few steps until all fields are mapped to populate from the parent field. Once your fields are mapped, press the test button to check if your connections are working as expected. We have only covered a few of the many ways to use reference data in your forms. Please explore our help center and community for articles about using reference data in both the current builder and builder beta and also to find more creative ways to implement reference data in your forms. Thanks for joining me in the first video of the Customize Your Forms and Data Delivery session. Please join me in the next video on conditions.